The Reliance Controls Through the Wall Kit for Portable Generators is a simple to install, convenient, and safe way to use your portable generator for backup power during a power outage. The Through the Wall Kit routes power from your portable generator to a six outlet power panel inside your house where your lights, TV, refrigerator, microwave, computers, sump pump, and more can be powered with clean, dry extension cords. The inside panel even lights up the area around it so you can see what you are doing. This kit is easy to install by following the step-by-step -step instructions in this video. We recommend that you watch the video all the way through before you begin. Here are some common tools you will need during installation. A power drill, a one quarter inch drill bit, a hammer, a hacksaw, pliers, a flat tip quarter inch screwdriver, a number two Phillips screwdriver, a measuring tape, a pencil, and a small amount of PVC cement. You will also need a helper at two points early in the installation. Here is what you will find in the package. A six outlet indoor power panel, an outdoor power cord inlet box, a 12 inch flat bit drill, a 12 inch length of PVC conduit, a PVC conduit fitting, two foam weather insulating rings, a bag of four white tip two and a quarter inch slotted head screws and four wall anchors, and a bag of three stainless steel one and a half inch Phillips head screws. On your inside wall, find a convenience place for your indoor six outlet power panel about 19 inches from the floor. The location should be between wall studs and should not be in direct alignment with known electrical lines or water or waste pipes. Once you have determined a location, measure and mark the spot with a pencil. Then look on the outside wall of your house, directly opposite from your inside location. Make sure that spot does not interfere with other outside objects, such as bushes, utility or cable TV boxes, and other immovable hookups. And also make sure that the location and height of the power inlet box will allow enough room for a generator cord to be plugged into the bottom of it once it is mounted on your outside wall. Drill from the inside wall to the outside wall. At this point, if another person is available, as you drill, ask them to watch for just the drill tip to break through the outside wall. At that point, you need to stop drilling. So back on the inside wall, center the pointed tip of the 12-inch flat drill bit on your pencil mark. Level the drill parallel to the floor, and keeping the drill bit level to the floor throughout the drilling process, slowly and steadily apply firm pressure as you drill straight through your interior wall or paneling, then stop. With your drill bit through the first layer of wallboard, probe the interior of the wall for any electrical, water, or waste pipes that would be in your direct path through the wall. Finding none, continue. As you continue drilling, when the drill first makes contact with any insulation, move the drill forward very slowly at high RPM to make sure the sharp cutting edge of the drill bit has a chance to cut through the insulation gradually without snagging. Forcing the drill bit through the insulation quickly may cause it to snag. Once the drill bit hits the outside wall, with your helper watching the outside wall, apply steady pressure until just the tip of the bit breaks through. Your helper should signal you at that point to let you know that just the tip has emerged. Then slowly back out the drill. On the outside wall, center the pointed tip of the drill in the small hole that was created by the drill tip when you first penetrated the outside wall. Keeping your drill level and on high RPM, carefully and slowly drill through the harder exterior walls only. 
Vary the drill speed as needed to avoid cosmetic damage to the outside wall until you have a clean one and a quarter inch hole on the outside. Then, from the inside wall again, push the stick of conduit firmly and steadily through the path you created with the drill through any insulation or other material inside the wall until the conduit hits the exterior wall. Then feel around with the conduit until you find the hole on the exterior wall and push the conduit all the way through both the interior and exterior walls. The PVC conduit now should be extending a few inches from each side of the wall as shown. Straighten out the wires attached to the indoor power panel. Fish the wires through the PVC conduit, then push the inside end of the conduit tightly into the cradle in the back of the inside power panel. Then with your helper holding the inside power panel tightly against the inside wall with its rear cradle inside the inch and a quarter hole, go outside and mark the conduit with a pencil one eighth inch away from the surface of the outside wall. Then back on the inside wall, position the power panel against the inside wall with its rear cradle inside the inch and a quarter inch, inch and a quarter hole. Level its position. Holding the power panel level, insert the four white tip mounting screws into each of the four mounting holes in the power panel. With a flat tip screwdriver, screw each of the mounting screws against the interior wall with sufficient pressure to leave a mark on the wall. Then pull the power panel and PVC conduit from the wall entirely. Using a quarter inch drill bit, drill a hole at each mark. Insert one white wall anchor into each hole and tap it in. From the inside of the house, assuming that you have pulled the power panel and the attached conduit and wires completely out of the wall, again. Disconnect the PVC conduit from the back of the inside power panel. Use a hacksaw or PVC cutter to cut the PVC conduit at the pencil mark you made on the conduit at the 1 8 inch mark. At this point we recommend taping the ends of the wire leads together with electrical tape. Holding the power panel in your hand Fish the wires back through the PVC conduit. Apply a thin coat of PVC cement to the end surface of the PVC conduit as well as to the inside of the rear cradle on the power panel. Then push the conduit and power panel together tightly for about 10 seconds. After you've done that, fish the whole assembly back through the wall, leaving the wires sticking out of the out exterior wall. From the inside wall again, position the power panel on the inside wall with its four holes aligned with the four wall anchors you installed. Insert the four white tip power panel mounting screws into the four anchors. Use a flat tip screwdriver to tighten the power panel to the inside wall until it is snug. Then on the outside of the house, Remove the cover from the outdoor lint box by unscrewing the two screws on the front of the box with a number two Phillips screwdriver. Temporarily slide out the wiring tray. Locate the circular half inch pre-cut knockout hole on the upper left back of the power inlet box and push it outward until it pops out. Locate the supplied half inch knockout hole washer in the small plastic bag inside the box and snap it into the knockout hole. Then unscrew the tightening ring from the conduit fitting, leaving the small rubber insulating ring on the fitting. From the back of the power inlet box, push the exposed threaded end of the conduit fitting through the knockout hole. Screw the tightening ring back onto the conduit fitting from the inside of the, the inlet box and tighten. Then use the pliers to tighten it securely. Depending on how flat the power inlet box fits to your outside wall, fit one or two of the foam insulating rings 
over the conduit fitting on the back of the power inlet box as necessary. Fish the wires from the outside wall of the house through the knockout hole and into the power inlet box. Apply a small amount of PVC cement to the inside surface of the PVC conduit protruding from the back of the power inlet box as well as to the outside surface of the conduit sticking out of the house. Fit the PVC conduit fitting into the end of the conduit and push together firmly. The conduit fitting will be recessed into the inch and a quarter hole on the outside of your house. Level the rear panel of the power inlet box to your outside wall. Insert the three stainless steel inch and a half mounting screws into the three mounting holes molded into the back panel of the inlet box and tighten securely to the outside wall. Compress the foam insulating ring or rings when tightening to add weatherproofing to the fixture. Holding the slide out wiring tray of the power inlet box in your hand, insert the four pre-stripped wires into the set screw holes in the base of the power inlet plug fixture as follows. The green wire into the hole marked G, the white wire into the hole marked W, the black wire into the hole marked X, and the red wire into the hole marked Y. Push the wires all the way into the marked terminal holes and tighten the set screws on the sides of each terminal until the wire will not pull out. Make sure no wire insulation is clamped in the terminals, only copper. Slide the tray all the way back into the power inlet box. Tuck the wires in neatly. Replace the inlet box cover then by tightening the two long screws. The installation is finished. You're ready to go. Use a 30 amp 10 gauge generator cord with NEMA L1430 locking plug and connector ends to connect your portable generator to the Reliance controls through the wall kit. To connect your generator cord, lift the weatherproof power inlet cover on the bottom of the outdoor inlet box. Connect the connector end of the power cord by lining up the prongs of the inlet box with the slots on the connector end of the cord making sure the prongs and the slots align. Then push the connector end of the power cord all the way into the inlet and turn clockwise until it locks in place. We recommend using at least a 20 foot long cord in order to keep generator exhaust away from your house. Start your portable generator. The six outlets of the indoor power panel should now be electrified and the LED lights should be lit. So go ahead and plug in your appliances.